Hey there, my name is Michael Blanc and welcome to the ultimate guide to buying apartment buildings with private money. Uh, I'm really excited to spend the next few min minutes uh, here with you. And you know, here's what I know about you. The reason you're probably here on the site and watching this video is because you're looking for financial freedom and you're considering apartment buildings to help you get there. You know, maybe you wanna quit your job. Uh, maybe you just wanna work for yourself. Maybe you wanna retire in the next five years or so, or you want to augment your income. Uh, you're looking for passive income. You're looking for adding certain net worth. You know, maybe you want to achieve financial security for your family or leave a, a legacy for your, for your children. Uh, either way, you're looking, you have certain financial goals and you think that apartment buildings are the way to get there. You know, I happen to agree with that. I think apartment buildings are probably the number one way to achieve your financial goals. And it may not happen tomorrow, but in the course of three to five years, you can fundamentally change your entire life by following some steps and taking action. Now, here's why I like apartment buildings as a combination. Now, number, number one, it's the most learnable and replicatable business model in the world. I can teach you exactly how to go by buying apartment buildings, accumulating units, and et cetera. It's a very well-defined system that I teach in this course. And if you follow those steps, you will get to success. It's a very teachable business, more so than any other business in the world. Number one, it's, uh, it's one of the most passive investments. Now, it's not one of those things where you can sit back and forget about it. Not very few, uh, very few investments are like that, but certainly it's very passive because it's built into the business model. You have a property management company that's going to take care of the property for you, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a passive uh, activity, which is great, which means you can do a lot of it. It's one of the most lowest risk investments in the world. And why do I know that? Because banks are willing to lend lots and lots of money for very low interest rates, which means that banks think it's low risk as well right? And it's a scalable business. You know, if you start with a small deal, a 10 unit, whatever deal, you know, you would then add a 20 unit deal, you can add a 30 unit deal, and you can keep building the business up as big as you want to, to make it, or you can stop whenever you want. So it's very scalable. So this is why I love apartment building investing. And this is why I think you should seriously consider it yourself to meet your, uh, to, to, you know, to achieve your financial goals. What I want to do in this video is show you how you can create passive income and generate long term wealth by investing in apartment buildings. And the way I'm gonna do it is I wanna give you a behind the scenes look at how I purchased my 12 unit apartment building. And the reason I wanna show you that is because it's a relatively small deal, okay? So in your mind, you think a small is easier, that's fine. Let's go with that for now, okay? It's a relatively small deal, you know, much achievable, and it's an ideal showcase for your first deal. Now this small building may be small, but it's adding about $50,000 of net worth uh, to my net worth every year. So it's small, but it's it packs a punch. And I'll show you why that is, uh, of how this how this is even possible. So n here's the thing, it's not rocket science. You just need some knowledge, confidence, and to take action. And I can help you with the knowledge and the confidence, and I'm gonna encourage you strongly to take action. That's what we're gonna do in this course. You know, when I, uh, when I was growing up, I, you know, I just kind of did what people tell me, kind of like you, and you, know, you were taught, go to, you know, go to school, get good grades, uh, get a good job, right? That's the, the, and so I was on that path. I mean, you know, so I got a master's degree in computer science, you know, for lack of something else, I figured I can get a, a job uh, when, I, when I was done. So I was a programmer, you know, in my first two or three years out of grad school. And I eventually joined a small startup company and I was in the right, this was during the internet boom, I was in the right place at the right time and we ended up going public and put a bunch of money in my bank account and it was awesome. Now, at the time, my dream was kind of being my own CEO of a software company. And so I started moving around within that company and I spent two years in marketing and then the actual last year and a half in, in sales, software sales, which I've never done before. Really, really hard to do, by the way. I learned a lot. And, and it was only 2004 when I first read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, God, I'm such an idiot. It doesn't matter how much money I have in the bank account. It's how much passive income I'm deriving. So I decided to kind of change the entire course. And I, I you know, really thought about this. Um, and I decided to pursue this cash flow strategy. And so I, I, I follow what, you know, Kiyosaki talks about. You have a cash flow business and real estate. So I was like, this is great. I got a bunch of money. This is great. I'm going to get into a cash flow business. And at this time, I decided I was going to get into a pizza franchise because I knew some people that were in there and they were like, oh yeah, we're going to hire a guy. He's going to run all the restaurants and it's going to, this is how much it costs. And I'm just going to sit back and count the passive income. I was like, great. That sounds great to me. 
you know, and, and so that I pursued that. And on the other side, I got into real estate by flipping houses. So I signed up, I invested in my education. I signed up with a local mentor and he, uh, and, and I started flipping a few houses, two or three houses and was extremely successful with these first two flips. This was right before, right before the recession. And I was like, this is amazing, you know, and it took me 10, 15 hours a week and I made as much money in one year as I did, you know, working at the software company. It's crazy. And on the restaurant side, what I did is I basically plowed the vast majority of my net worth in these restaurants. My idea was, look, I have enough capital to maybe build three or four restaurants. They will then cover my living expenses and then they will fund future growth. So I had a you know plan for 20 restaurants in 10 years and I had you know projections and everything else. So that was my plan, my plan there. So by the time um, and I got very busy with uh, with the pizza restaurants and in 2006 and seven, I started getting into commercial real estate and I did a lot of marketing in Texas and call it. And, and finally, after nine months and looking at about 100 deals, I finally had an 82 unit under contract and it was awesome. It was a smoking hot deal. And I decided to put it on hold because the stuff that was going on in the restaurants, we were buying restaurants, building restaurants. It was crazy. I knew that if, if I was going to buy this 82 unit, I'd have to spend some time in Texas. And I just couldn't afford to do that. So I put the whole commercial real estate thing on hold until about 2009. And the 2009 market, as you remember, was recovering from the from the recession. There was a lot of foreclosures on the market, and the, and the, but the retail market was recovering in this area, in the, in the greater Washington, D.C. area. So I decided to kind of go in, not just flip a few, but do it right. And at this point, I had no more of my own capital, so it forced me to raise money for it. So I went and raised money from friends and family and started buying houses like crazy. And over the next two and a half years, flipped about 30 houses. And I knew it was a market opportunity. My, my real strategy was commercial real estate, but I just couldn't ignore the opportunity in front of me. So that's what I did. A lot of good experience, made some good money, uh, et cetera. Um, but really my long-term vision was to get into buy and hold commercial uh, uh, real estate. So in 2011, I came across a deal and it was kind of a referral from a wholesaler of mine who flipped me houses, who knew a wholesaler who had this building under contract that was, that was listed on the MLS. It was a 12 unit building in Washington, DC. And I looked at it and I said, man, this, I smell an opportunity here. The rents were under market. It's been under market a long time. It was overpriced. I was like, sure, I'll give it a whack and got it under contract. It was awesome. And, uh, but it took forever to close. It took four, four and a half months to close. And we fell out a contract once. There was compliance issues. There was a whole bunch of problems with it. And, and once we closed, I was so relieved. I was like, finally we're closed. And then the real nightmare became, uh, began. I mean, it was, it was uh, that building in the first 18, 24 months almost bankrupted me. I thought I was going to run out of money and lose it. And this was my first syndicated deal, meaning that this is where I had investors, I had the LLC with the members, the private placement memorandum, the subscription agreement, the whole nine yards, maybe a little overkill for this kind of deal, but it was the right thing to do. So I did it and I learned a lot. Um, if you uh, want to read that, about this story, you can read about it on uh, the michaelblanc.com forward slash about or just click on the about link on my website and you can read the whole story there. It's a it's a good one. And a year later, I had syndicated my second deal, and this was the purchase of two restaurants. So it was similar in, in, in that it was a little more sophisticated. The deal structure was a little more sophisticated, but essentially the same thing. And, and you know, when you get the taste for using other people's money, it opens your eyes and the whole world of, of opportunities. So after a while, people were asking me, you know, at the RIA meetings and stuff like that, man, how did you how did you raise the money? How did you put the deal together? You know, what about the SEC requirements? And I was asked to present in front of small groups and things of that nature until one day I did a, a full day uh, seminar and it was extremely well intended. There was a couple dozen people there and they, they loved it. And I was like, this is fantastic. So I said, one day, you know, um, I want to be in a position to put all this stuff together in one course online in video with all the documents there. And that's what I wanted to do one day. And that's why I decided in early 2014, uh, that's when I took action, but it took me two years to get to that point as well. And I started writing about apartment building investing and on my own blog, and I created a free ebook that you probably already downloaded called The Secret to Raising Money to Buy Your First Apartment Building. And I became a weekly contributor on thebiggerpockets.com. So if you go on there every week, I have one article on there. And um, I also have a podcast and a YouTube channel with videos and stuff like that, all on themichaelblanc.com. Everything's referenced on there. So I have a ton and ton of free material out there for you to take a look at. So... 
you know, why am I here? You know, um, and why do I want to build a portfolio of apartment building, um, you know, a, a, a units? And you have to ask yourself, what is that why? You know, why, why do you want to do this stuff? Why do you want to learn something new? You know, be outside your comfort zone, take a bunch of risk. You know, for what? I'll answer for myself. You know, I figured out late in life that I was an entrepreneur. I mean, it, I was 35 when I left, you know, the corporate world and went out on my own, basically throwing away my entire education experience at that point. I was, you know, 35 years old. And I figured out that I really enjoy working for myself in, in itself. Just being an entrepreneur is something I really, really enjoy. Now, secondarily, I, I like some financial freedom so that I can do whatever I want. That, and, you know, we like to travel. That's one of the reasons we, we homeschool our children. And when we travel, we like to be gone for a month or so or really experience the culture. And um, so that's, that's another reason I, I do it. And, you know, I, I figured out also late in life that I enjoy teaching. Uh, I enjoy doing this and putting out videos and podcasts and writing. And I really enjoy seeing people transform themselves and reaching a new level that they hadn't been at before. And I really enjoy that. I'm also very active with a mission in Uganda, Africa, and visited there um, in the summer of uh, 2014. So for me, apartment buildings are a key way to achieve that financial goal that I want. I want enough income to cover my living expenses. And I want that investment to be relatively passive. And I want to be able to scale it as, as well. And I think apartment buildings meet those requirements you know, perfectly better than any other business I know, certainly in a restaurant business, uh, for sure. Now, so let me ask you this, why are you here? You're on this call, you're still watching this video. And, you know, maybe you're looking for some of the same things, but you should ask yourself why you're looking, what you want to achieve, and, and, and be very clear about that. And maybe it's, it is because you want to quit your job, and you're kind of tired with the grind, and you, you know, want a little extra income or you want to retire in the next five years. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, provide financial security for, for your family. You know, whatever the reason is, maybe you want to travel more, spend more time with your family, just sit down and, and write down why you want to do all this stuff. That's really important because what we're going to do here is not easy to do, but it's extremely worthwhile and it will get you there. But the why is very important. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how you can how you can achieve those those goals by apartment building investing, and we're going to take a closer behind the scenes look at this 12 unit that I did, and um, and and how you can use it to achieve your financial goals. In this case, I'm going to show you exactly how this adds fifty thousand dollars of net worth um, every single year, just with a small apartment building, which is a perfect example for your first deal. And what I'm going to share with you works anywhere in the country and anyone can do it. Now it's harder, I agree, to find deals in certain parts of the country, but it, this will work anywhere, okay, in general. Now some parts are better than others, but it doesn't take away from the strategy. Now let me start first with a number one objection that I hear most frequently. And that is, hey, um, I don't have enough money or credit or experience to get started with apartment building investing. And I'm gonna talk about that at great length, but I don't want that to be a showstopper for you, okay? Because the way we're gonna overcome that is by turning you into an entrepreneur, okay? You're not a real estate investor. A real estate investor, the term investor implies that you have money, capital, right? That's what investors do. You need capital to invest in something, okay? I don't want you to think of yourself as a real estate investor. I want you to think of yourself as a real estate entrepreneur. Now, what, are, what is, comes to mind when you hear entrepreneur, right? Entrepreneurs make stuff happen. They're rainmakers, right? They bootstrap things. They uh, raise money. They bring people together. They bring the opportunity together. They put it all together. They mix it and they make something happening out of, out of nothing, right? So once you think of an entrepreneur, and as an entrepreneur, you may not have the experience to do what you want to do. You may not have the capital to do. You're going to bring all those things together. You're going to bring people and resources together to make this happen. And this is an example of that, okay? Now, here's an important thing for this video that I want you to remember. I want you to focus like a laser on one deal, okay? I want you to write down your goals and your financial dreams of whatever, $5,000 of passive income, 10,000, 200,000, whatever the case may be, okay? You can write all that stuff down. But I want you to focus your efforts on this first deal. That's really all that matters right now is that first deal. It doesn't matter what your third, fourth, or fifth deal looks like. It is that one deal that I want you to focus on, okay? So I want you to keep that in mind as we go through through this, and that's why I'm focusing on a 12 unit and not, and not like some kind of 50 or 100 unit. So all you need is that first deal. 
Now, here's why this is so important. Let, let me paint you a picture. Okay, so close your eyes. Let's say you want $7,500 of passive income each month. Okay, whatever. You crunch some numbers and you decide that in order to achieve that, you would have to control about 100 units. All right. Now you decide at the end of the day that your first ideal, uh, that your first deal is a little bit on the smaller side. Let's say it's a 10 to 15 unit deal. Okay. Now that deal will cost you about $600,000 in many place, many parts of the country, depending on where you are, say $600,000. So you'll need to raise about 35% of that or about $210,000 for the down payment, closing costs, and maybe some repairs. So 200 grand. Now, this is not an insignificant task. I don't want to say that raising $200,000 is easy, okay, but it's not insurmountable, and it's certainly not outrageous. It's a very doable thing that you can do regardless of where you are in your situation. All right, so you get your head around and you decide to go for it. So let's say you do focus on that, on that 12 unit, and let's say it takes you a really long time to do that first deal. When I mean really long time, I mean like a year or maybe even a year and a half. I mean a long time, like not in the get rich quick scheme or instant gratification, but you're doing this over long periods of time and it's very frustrating and challenging, which again, why you need to go back to that why. Why are you doing all this stuff to keep you going? But let's say all of a sudden in a year and a half, you have your first deal and it's a 15 unit deal. Now you're stunned. You can't believe it. You look back on your path and you can't, I can't all this effort and I have now a 15 unit and you close on it and it's, you know, $1,500 per month in passive income. You know, you, you got a ways to go. So you figure, okay, this is great. It took me forever to get to 15% of my goal of hundred units. But here's the thing. You're actually more than 15% there. You're actually much more than 15% there. And here's why. Chances are, by this point, you've generated a deal flow. The reason you got this deal is because you have deal flow, which means that you probably have other deals in the pipeline. You probably have some offers out. You've, you, you're dealing with brokers. So you have a pipeline now that you didn't have before. Number two, you've already raised the money for this deal. You've already been out in the community. You have a network investors. And there's more money where you got the first one from. So you already have some existing networks you didn't have before. You now also have experience and track record that you can leverage. So sellers take you more seriously as well as brokers and lenders. And it is considerably easier to do that second deal than the first deal. In fact, about six months later, you close on your second deal, which is a 35 unit, because uh, by the time you close on that 12 unit like I did, you wish it was a bigger deal. And the next logical deal for you is somewhere between 25 and 50. And you happen to do a 35 unit building six months later. And another, let's say nine months, you actually close on a 50 unit building. All of a sudden, within two, three years, you're at 100 units. Okay, and it's all because of that one deal. So even though it took forever to get that that first deal done. Once you did, a whole new world of possibilities opened up to you that wasn't even before before there. And in, in a short order, two, three years, you now control 100 units and achieved your financial goal of $7,500 per month in passive income. So you can do that which you want to do. Quit your job, retire early, whatever the case may be, in just three to five years. I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, do you see how critical that first deal is now? And listen, I want to help you do your first deal. That is my passion. That's really what I want to do with not only this video and the course and everything I do. That is because I know once you do your first deal, you don't need me anymore. And that's fine. That's perfect. That's my goal. So that is my goal in today's webinar as well. And this is why I love commercial real estate. And there's four ways to make money. Most people teach, you know, three ways. I have a fourth way. Okay. Four ways is obviously the cash flow. Then the second one is the appreciation that we just talked about going from 49 to you know, 69 is the, the appreciation that you're forcing by increasing the net operating income. And then the tenants are paying down your mortgage. So that's awesome. There's a fourth one, which is the fees for you. And you are the syndicator. You're making everything happen. You're making the deal happen. Um, and you're managing the property and you're going to dispose of it for a profit, presumably. And for those, you can get fees. All right. There's four ways. That's why I love commercial real estate. Now, let me just give you some numbers just to demonstrate to you how real this is. So here's where these numbers come, uh, come from that I'm going to show you. They're from a 12 unit case study 
uh, that that mirrors very closely one of the deals I've done and are similar to kind of deals that others are doing as well. It's not a crazy outlandish deal. Okay, here, here are the assumptions. It's a 12 unit de- building. <clears throat> we buy it for 475. We raise $227,000 from private investors and we increase the rents from an average of 525 to $800. And uh, because we're going to make some renovations, actually substantial renovations, about $4,500 per unit. And we're going to add Section 8 tenants at turnover. So both of those will get us closer to market uh, rents and even more because Section 8 uh, pays more. We also reduced some of the expenses as well. And we paid ourselves a 3% acquisition fee at closing, which is about $15,000. And these numbers all come from the syndicated deal analyzer. So I'm going to wave my hands a little bit just to assure that these actually are real numbers. Um, but, but I want to keep it a little simple and not go into the, the, the too many of the weeds. I'm already giving you too many numbers as it is. So here are the gross profits of this deal, okay? And this is a deal uh, assuming that we sell this thing after three years. So we buy it and we increase the rents over three years and we sell it uh, for, um, and and so what we have is three years of cash flow, which is about $71,000. $27,000 of the mortgage was paid down over three years. And we have about $155,000 in profit from appreciation. And that that is after... Um, sales commissions and closing costs from the deal, right? Because afterwards, we actually created more like 200 something thousand, but you have to deduct your closing costs and sales commissions. So that's kind of a net profit from appreciation for a combined overall profit over three years of 253,000. That's the pie, right? That's that's for everything for you and the investors. Now, you're going to get certain fees. We already talked about the $16,000 fee that you paid yourself when you bought it. That's your acquisition fee. Now, you're also paying yourself 1% of the money raised each year as an asset management fee, all right? And that's about a little bit over $2,000, $2,300 per year or $6,800 total. Now, when you dispose of the asset, you're going to pay yourself a disposition fee of 1% of the sales price, and that's $8,300. So over the course of three years, you're paying yourself about $31,000 in fees for this transaction alone, all right? So keep that in mind. Now, we take those fees and we deduct those fees that are going to you from the pie, which was $253,000. So the pie now is $238,000 that you're going to split 50-50, right? Because your share is 50%, if you remember. So your share is 119 and then your fees are 31 and there's $150,000 profit uh, for you divided by three years that you held the assets, $50,000 per year. It's nuts. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's nuts. And you've not used any of your own money. Okay, so just to drive this point home, it's a small building. You raised two hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars. You made some incremental improvements. It's not like you you completely like you moved the building five feet to the right. Okay, you made some tweaks to the building. You provided better management uh, to it, and before you know it, you know you've made one hundred fifty thousand dollars in in three years, and you've done your first deal, which means you're set up to do deal number two, three, four, as many as you want. It really is staggering if you really think about it. Now, here's the thing. I mean, are apartment buildings right for you? You know, and you have to ask yourself this question, you know, what difference would an extra $50,000 make? You know, um, and, and and how important is this to you? Now, and, and you know, we did this, we just did this numbers on a 12 unit, but imagine adding a zero after everything, right? So if you add a zero every, everything, you now are at 120 units and you made 1.5 million in three years. Okay, this is this is how scalable this business is. So I do want you to get excited about the possibility, but I don't want you to get too excited about the possibility because it is all about focusing on your first deal. And that's really what I want to do in this video is focus you on that first deal. How do you do this? Again, focus on, on your first deal. Don't be overwhelmed with the whole thing. Just focus on your first deal. You know, invest in your education. You're going to need, a, you're going to need knowledge to do this because it is a little bit more on the complex side. It's not rocket science, though. You need to arm yourself in, in, with, with uh, you need to invest in your education and find a coach or mentor. I'm obviously available to you and have a, a coaching program as well, but it doesn't have to be me. It could be somebody else or it doesn't even have to be a, a paid coach. But you want someone who's experienced, who's been there, who can walk you through, you know, the challenges, who can, you know, keep you focused and on that goal and walk you kind of through the difficulties that you'll you'll find but regardless of what you do is you want to take action and i don't want you to be owned by this whole, whole thing you know even if you focus on your steel you're like oh my gosh how am i gonna you know raise twenty thousand dollars don't don't do that okay i have a, a kind of a you know the best way that i know to take action is to simply 
focus on the next three things that you got to do. The next three things, write them down on a piece of paper. And there's three things you should be able to complete in the next week or so. Whatever those three are, you go and you simply do them. Don't think about what comes after. Just do those three. Okay, when you're done, cross them off and put the next three on your list. Just do them. Don't analyze too much. Just, just do it because you crazy. Don't overwhelm the next three things. Okay. Now, if you haven't done your first deal yet, the next best thing, okay, from, from my perspective and also from yours, is to take a real hard look at my course, The Ultimate Guide to Buying Apartment Buildings with Private Money. Okay, this is, in my opinion, the next best thing you can do because everything you need is in this course. I'm going to give you a five and a half minute tour of this course and you can spend more time on the website and look at each chapter, look at some of the sample videos and really kind of get a feel for the course. A lot of it is, is, is out there for you to look at. But I'm going to give you an overview, okay? Because this is, in my mind, the next best thing that would help you focus on your next deal. Um, I, I spend a lot of time in chapter two on raising money. Uh, two hours, actually. The video itself is, is, two, is two hours. I spend a lot of time because it's so essential to what you're doing. Um, I talk about selecting the right area in which to invest um, because sometimes even it's out of area. It's, it's a little hot right now, so you may have to look in areas that are not in your backyard. How do you do that? What do you look for? Uh, and how do you handle that? How to find the deals, how to create deal flow. Um, we talked about that a little bit as well. How to build your team, who to put on your team, scripts, questions to ask, things to look for. That's chapter five. Chapter six is all about analyzing the deals with a syndicated deal analyzer. So if you've already purchased a syndicated deal analyzer, this is a chapter you basically already have. If you haven't, then this is part of the course. And I spent a lot of time on this because it's so integral, as I said before, to the entire process. Chapter seven, we're, uh, we're making offers and, um, and, and we're negotiating and it's all about contracts. And eight, we have it under contract. We're performing diligence, and we're going to do that with a week-by-week -week checklist of exactly what to do in each week. Chapter nine, we're talking about financing and loans, how to uh, create relationship with lenders, what to say, what the sample, uh, the packages that we can put together, so that we can get the financing, and then what to do for the home stretch of closing, how to handle, and particularly the investors, and how to get them get the money to the to the closing. And 11 is managing the property, interviewing property managers, uh, what to look for, scripts, again, when to fire the property manager, what reports to review, and how frequently, what, how to add value, and then exit strategies, all the way from flipping you know, to a regular hold, um, cash out refinance, and the syndicated deal analyzer helps you determine the most profitable strategy. That's chapter 12. And that's the course. And uh, here's a you know a little testimonial from from Wayne. He's looked at a few courses and he chose mine because he felt that um, I presented the material from a newbie's point of view, and in the media format that I prefer, which is high quality video. He likes his video. A lot of a lot of students like the video, and then they'll go through the course again by downloading the audio, maybe listening to it in the, in a car or in the gym. And uh, uh, and there's also a downloadable PDF ebook that you can read. So it's different formats as well. And so most people go through it multiple times. So let me give you a quick visual tour, all right? So everything is online. You get the videos that we've been talking. And underneath it is the text that corresponds to that video. And as you go through, you can click off the module as complete. And you go on to the next one. And that way you can track progress. And here are all the chapters that we talked about that we're going to cover. And there's different modules right underneath there, and you just walk through the course uh, one by one and check off the modules. You can also download in, uh, the ebook; it's 185-page ebook. Uh, you can download as well and put on your Kindle or device. You can download the syndicated deal analyzer that's included in the course, central to the entire course for analyzing numbers and making uh, offers. You can download all of everything via audio as well onto your device. You can listen to it in your in your car or at the gym an extensive document library that's used throughout the course with checklists, documents, contracts, etc. And then there's also case studies, right? So the idea here is that you uh, apply what you've learned. There's marketing packages in here. You practice your analysis and, and that what you've learned. And then you compare it with my video analysis of those deals. And it kind of gives you a few things to practice with. So I wanted to take the, tell you a little bit more about uh, one of my students 
his uh, his name is Roger, who completed the course and really took action. And he was looking for you know smaller deals like ten units or so, and he he managed to get a, a fifty one unit under contract. And he was totally overwhelmed, and he goes, man, I, I got this on a contract, but it's way too big for me. I might take a look at it. So I took a look at it, and I liked the deal. This was in, in, in Tennessee, and I ended up putting it on a contract. And he says, okay, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll essentially wholesale this thing to you, uh, but I want to be involved. So we shared a Dropbox folder and uh, stayed in touch with the email and phone calls, and he looked over my shoulder, and he actually did a few things. He, you know, he called some lenders, uh, did a property tour, talked to the property manager because he was fairly local. And we had on a contract for two and a half weeks, and we ended up terminating the contract because we found things that we didn't like. But at the end of it, he was like, man, I am not looking at 10 units anymore. And immediately, he was pursuing a 72-unit. And then after that, a couple of weeks later, he was looking at 196-unit. But that is what I'm tell what I, my, my point is that simply by taking action and applying what was in the course, his comfort zone expanded significantly and now he's looking for much larger larger deals so my number one goal for you with this course and anything i do the podcast the youtube video the the blog articles is to get you in your first deal nothing would please me more than to have you do your first deal and i'm also in the process want to teach you to raise money because it is such a powerful skill that once you acquire the taste for you'll be just blown away and it'll be a whole new world so just keep this in mind that is what i want uh, for you is to get you in your first deal now, i got a couple bonuses for you of course if you buy the course it's like i said it's, it's an online thing uh, but i will give you 60 days of priority email access all right meaning that if you have you might have more detailed questions because you're going through the course you're probably going to be analyzing deals looking at deals i'm going to be there for you for 60 days at no additional cost um, I just feel that's that's really important. And I've included something that I was thinking about not including, which is the syndicator legal library. And these are the legal documents that, that oftentimes cost thousands of dollars. This includes the operating agreement, private placement memorandum, subscription agreement. And I have two operating agreements in there that I've created uh, basically templates from. And, and I have an executor summary that describes exactly the terms of these operating agreements and which sections talk about those. The idea being that you understand what they, what they do and can modify them. And once you modify them, you can give it to your attorney to actually finalize. And that'll save you, that alone will save you $1,000 in, in attorney's fees. And the one operating agreement is, is the one we did for the 12 unit. And it's, a, it's a simpler one. It basically makes the investors fairly silent. And the second one is a little more sophisticated. There's two classes of members in there, and it gives the – they have different tiers of decision-making. It has pro, uh, provisions for early buyout and capital calls and things of that nature. So uh, I'm including that in this course because I feel like it's such an important part of it rather than selling it separately. Okie dokie. So Amal really liked the course, and he says that it's, it's the best available out there. And I say this confidently with firsthand experience of some other similar courses that are available on the market. And Amal really, really has seen a lot, and I really appreciate his feedback that I've incorporated actually since then. Paul Z says, I went ahead and purchased your deal analyzer, watched the videos, and assessed the analyzer itself. Forgive me when I say this, but effing A, this thing is awesome. <laughs> I can't imagine how many hours you put into developing this thing, but thank you for doing it. Thanks, Paul, for that. And um, Alex, uh, said he commented on the operating agreement, saved me a lot of money in legal fees and giving me the ability to at least put together an initial draft that would have probably cost me close to $2,000 in my area. I will give you a 30-day money bear guarantee. So you can buy this thing without risk. And people always think, you know, my gosh, if I do this, they're not going to give me my money back. I've never hassled anyone uh, for a refund ever. You email me, there's a button I push in the system and it goes back to your credit card. It's that simple. If you decide it's not for you at, at all, um, I'm not going to hassle you for a refund. And I'm also going to provide free updates because it's an online product. Um, there's, I'm going to update information as I go along uh, and I'm working on actually working on, on adding an additional chapter that I want to add to the course so you get that at no, at no cost. So you're getting a 30-day money-back guarantee. Okay, you get the free upgrades. You have the two bonuses of 60 days priority email support, the $249 value, and the syndicated legal library, which is at least $1,000. And, you know, the value you have in this course is worth at least $1,000 if you compare it to a three-day boot camp that range anywhere from 
$5,000 to $3,000, except for the fact that you don't have to travel and you can take it home with you and access it as many times as you want in the media that you prefer, right? So if I add all these things together, you're actually getting a value of $2,200 or more, right? And what I wanted to do is I wanted to get that cost just under $1,000. So I'm not going to charge you that. And I'm asking $9.95 for the course. And the way you get the course is you can go to the michaelblanc.com forward slash course, or maybe you're already on the page right now, which is where you're watching this video. But if not, then go to the michaelblanc.com forward slash course, and that's where you can review the course in, in at your leisure. You can look at the outline of the course. I have every chapter, every module on there. I even let you watch some of the videos on there. Um, so take your time, look at the course, take, check me out on the michaelblanc.com, all the free free sources, learn about my story, and hopefully you'll decide to uh, sign up. Again, it's a 30-day money back guarantee, so there's no risk. And uh, yeah, I'd love to I'd love to have you on board. Uh, I really would. It'd be an honor to uh, to be your mentor. Um, and if you have any other questions from watching this video, uh, just ask away at the michaelblanc.com forward slash ask. There's also a link at the michaelblank.com under ask and just ask me questions. I really do my best to, to respond to every, uh, every question I get there as well. So I hope that you'll consider making this your first step on your journey. Remember, focus on that first deal and within that first deal, focus on the, first, on the next three things that you should do. And I think this is a pretty good first step uh, because from that, you will develop the next set of three steps. So I hope you'll take action and I hope to see you on board. And so you might think that $995 is a lot to plunk down for a course, you know, but is it? Is it really? Remember your goal from earlier on, which is to focus like a laser on that first deal and remember why you're doing it, right? You wanna change your life, you wanna create financial freedom in the next three to five years. So is it really that big of an investment considering that? And imagine what your life will be once you do that first deal. Really, the sky is the limit. Also remember this, remember that acquisition fee we talked about. When you do that first deal, you're gonna pay yourself a 3% acquisition fee and that will more than pay for that course. I mean, I mean you're gonna get a 20X return on, on your investment, on your first deal alone. So really it's a no brainer and I want it to be a no brainer because I want you to succeed. Like I said, I'm really, really passionate about getting you in that first deal. So take action now and go to the michaelblong.com forward slash course and check out the course and sign up. If funds are a little tight right now, that's that's fine. I have a payment plan. You make three payments of three hundred forty-nine dollars each, and that gets you into the course as well. So I don't I don't want you to have any excuses. Okay, I really want you to get in this course so you get your first deal. So anyway, uh, really appreciate your time uh, that you've spent uh, with me here, and uh, thanks for everything. And I'd be honored to have you on board.